So we're gonna, what are we doing? We're going to try a new fermentation experiment. Yep. Um, Jay really likes hot sauce. The only thing that's growing in our garden really well right now are hot peppers. We've got a few, but not quite enough to make our experiment with. So we stopped by one of our local farms, picked up some, a, a variety of hot peppers. Um, I think this is Wilkins Farm, I think it was. I think so, yeah. yeah. In Pepperell. In Pepperell. Um, so we're gonna try to make fermented hot sauce. So you have to start by fermenting peppers. So we're going to start cutting up the peppers. You gotta take the ends off. We picked a few different styles because we didn't want we, we didn't want to just go for heat. We want to kind of go for a variety of different flavors. So here's a silly question: Is any of this stuff that we want to do a iron roasting smoke on? Um, I'm not. We're, so I think we're going to actually have enough to do two jars worth. Okay, great. So I'm going to do half of them, and we're going to see how far that gets us. And then for a second one, I might. That's for you. Well, that's exciting. Um, <laughs> also, that'll clear out your sinuses. Yes. Rather so, nicely, actually. So pretty, this is, that one was what we think, because they just had like a, a chart with pictures. Mm. Nothing was actually labeled, so we guessed. Not labeled in a, in a way that was really understandable. Yeah. These are chili hybrids. If I had to no, put that. jalapeno hybrids. Uh, jalapeno yeah. hybrids. So I feel like uh, from a zero to 10 scale of zero being, you know, bread, and 10 being uh, putting a blowtorch in your mouth, that's somewhere around four. Um, do you want the seeds and the inside, or do you want me to take that stuff out? Make it spicy with the seeds, right? Right, yeah, yeah. For this particular spice and flavor, do you want more spice or less spice? Yeah, we kick it up a notch. Okay. So you essentially, based on this recipe, which I'm going to have to refer to at some point in time, is uh, cut up peppers into chunks and fill a jar with about an inch of um, space at the top. These are, so these are, this is the, one of these. Okay. And then the other piece is one of the, like a little one scotch of these, bonnet? yes. Or that's a pickling pepper maybe. Yeah. So these really aren't spicy. These are like a one, maybe okay, a two. Cool. They're pretty sweet. That's good. Oh, that's pretty. So that that starts off at like a two and gets up to a four and a half pretty okay. fast. It's All kind right. of a neat. It actually does have a very peppery flavor. It's really kind of nice. Well, we'll do like three of these guys. That would be great. Um, and then do you want to grab the green Serranos from the windowsill? Good call. Just um, give them a rinse. I can't remember when I did. These little ones here, right? Uh, the yeah, the one, the uh, no, the ones that are a little bit longer. Yeah. These are jalapenos. Oh, yeah, 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 Serranos. Yeah, sorry. I want to eat one of those. Yeah, well, we won't. We, we, yeah, we can do that. So this is our serrano pepper that we These grew. These have a kick. They definitely do have a kick. Yeah, piece. yeah you want, want a center part, or do you want an end? A, a piece with the seeds. Yeah. Wow. Bang. It's like a green hot flash in your head. It's really neat. <laughs> and it goes like, and then it builds. There you go. All right. <clears throat> Can I do more of this? Yep. Um, I bet you want to eat a piece of that too. So that looks really good. There you go. Thank you. It's 
fun, right? It's got kind of a citrusy thing. Oh, it does thing. have a little bit of a kick, but. It's a little kick, but it's yeah, like. Yeah, the citrus thing it's is It's got very a citrus thing. It's really cool. Oh, I like it. I think this is going to be a good flavor. So, like, the Serranos, for those of you who don't eat them, uh, Serranos, at least ours, have a very, this is going to sound ridiculous, it's the same peppery pepper you get on your tongue when you have, like, a lot of white pepper. If you had dried white pepper, that burn, it's the same thing, but it's very much amplified. Whereas, whatever this is, I don't know what it is, it's, it tastes almost like a... A traditional red pepper dipped in orange juice almost. It's got like a little citrus back to it. That's good. That Serrano woke me up though. Mm -hmm. And then I'm thinking maybe one of the jalapenos. Yeah, let's do that. I'm definitely going to bite one of those. Um, mm, let's, because we're going to do two patches. Let's okay. keep that one for the other batch. We're not going to do two batches right now. You can put it back. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I think the fact that it's 92 degrees in here and humid is uh, Ooh. Right. no harm, no foul. Mm -hmm. I like our jalapenos because our jalapenos have this weird bright pop and then it's a smooth, but like it's not a bad burn. It's like a five and a half, maybe a six. It's not really beyond a six though on my 10 scale, which is meaningless because no one else has that same scale. But that's how I feel about it. <laughs> and it's not like I don't touch them with my hands. Well, it's more I just was trying to, and then these guys we're gonna save for seed saving purposes. Mm -hmm. This would be pretty much the worst trick or treat ever. Would. Well, I don't know. Ish. If they were whole peppers, I wouldn't mind it. All right. So then we've got. Oh. Yes. One. We'll do one. Those look scary. Oh, these guys. That looks scary. Yep. Do you do you want one or like a half of one? I want to try a bite of it before I tell you how much of that I want. All right. I have no idea that how is hot the this end is going to be. It. Was that a, I just made a big mistake face? I'm thinking about it. Mm -hmm. So whatever this is, this is like a... It's a cayenne. That's a cayenne. Yeah. It has that cinnamon burn. It's like a cinnamon burn. Tastes like cinnamon. Holy smoke, that's good. Just one. Just the whole, the whole thing. Yeah, but the whole thing. Okay. And then we need. Will you grab me some garlic? Yep. Right. Here we go. Mm. Do you want me to rinse this board off? Yeah, you know what? That would not be the I worst thing ever. Um, Just leave that down there. Yeah. Yep. There we go. Maybe, uh, for the, oh, no, we don't. Oh. Want it. Do you want to throw the fan under? Maybe I, I would. I feel like it'll just be too much. Yeah. When we're done, we're almost When there. we're done, we'll, we'll be fine. So we did like six cloves of garlic. Some of them were a little small. You could do three or four, depending on how, if you're not, you know, as much of a fan. Jay would eat garlic with everything. Yep. Oh yeah. Maybe including ice cream, maybe. Not. I would put garlic on ice cream if there was a way to do it. <laughs> I once had, once had ice cream that was uh, eggnog and it had maple bacon caramelized bits in it. So it was bacon and eggs and uh that was ridiculous Amazing. yeah so if you could figure out a way to make garlic work with that i think one of our presidents was a fan of oyster ice cream so i suppose bacon or onion ice cream would somehow be done all right so you're basically you're packing that down there's no so there's less air yeah okay. yeah 
things fit a little bit better. Oh. I just want to make sure that any of these like little crevices we get as much kind of stuff into them as we can. Gotcha. You know, have less chance for an air pocket. Mm -hmm. So the objective when you're doing this is try to get all the air out. <clears throat> yeah, so once we put liquid in, we're gonna get all the air bubbles out, but we wanna just make sure that we use as much room in the jar to make sure that um, the um, material does not float too much. We're gonna put a weight on it, um, but we wanna make sure that there's really a little chance for it to kind of be in the air as possible. When, when you're fermenting, it, the idea is that the reaction takes place in an anaerobic environment. Uh, if you expose it to air, there's a likelihood you're going to get mold. fungus and mold and stuff. And some of those things aren't terrible, some of them aren't good. The The reality is, is that even if it's fine, it doesn't always look very appealing. Um, and just, it's better to not have it happen. All right, so we're leaving about an inch at the top. Um, and now we're gonna do four cups of water. This short. this thing of salt here? I was gonna try to get pink Himalayan salt or... Okay. Um, I'm not, I wasn't quite sure, but I also need these tools over here, so. I've also got Hawaiian sea salt over here. Yeah, I was thinking maybe doing maybe one Hawaiian sea salt if that actually has stuff in it. And then maybe two regular salts. <clears throat> just like the mineral profile? Yeah, I just I think it'll probably taste different, so. You know. Gotcha. And then we're gonna do so it's three tablespoons of salt to four cups of warm water. This isn't actually really warm. Um so it's gonna take a little bit more time to dissolve the salt, but we'll get there. So two of these? Just are two, yeah. yeah. Okay. So we may only use half of this, Brian. We'll just um, throw the other half in the um, jar for the other batch. It's so basically it's water and salt. It's just, yeah. Yep. Water and salt equals Brian. That simple. That's anytime you brine a turkey or a it's anything. a liquid usually yeah. a water or milk and salt just want to make sure all the salt is dissolved or as much of it as possible you don't want any hanging out because then it won't be salty enough so we can add warm water to it and then it'll help quicken that dissolve it i for whatever reason you, you didn't say warm water so i didn't grab it. I, you know what i didn't say warm water and i, I didn't know and i, I wasn't bad. actually I was like, thinking warm water well no and i should have been thinking it too because we're making a brine so it'd be easier to dissolve yeah, water and I, I don't know why i, I did cold okay. water while we're waiting for that will you grab me in the um compost bag so i can just clear all this yep stuff. or do you want to save this for bone broth Man. and snow You can also use your onion skins and for um, dyeing fabric if you're into natural dyeing, hold on. Um, which is random, but we also often take our uh, scraps like that and put them in uh, bone broth, but I think we have a couple bags of that stuff in the freezer right now. So. We don't need to wait too long. We don't need it to be boiling or anything. Just a little bit warmer. Yeah. I do like your idea of um, Charring them. Or, yeah, I just, I don't know if I have the energy for it tonight. No, I don't. Um, but maybe uh, tomorrow or the next day. It'll be good for a few days. Anyway. I think so. And then we'll use the last, the red serrano. Let's see if we've got any more serranos that pop up. I love those. Yeah. They're good. Yeah. That's my, that's my, there you go. That, that's my endorsement. Yeah. Officially for serranos, they are good. So hot sauce, you can do a lot of different things in your hot sauce. You can just do an assortment of peppers. You can do one kind of pepper. You can do, we're doing peppers, garlic, and onion. You can also add tomatoes to it. Um, I bet you could even add like zucchini or any other kind of vegetable for mass without adding heat. Um, 
So it's a pretty simple process overall. What we're essentially going to do, pack all of this stuff in tight, fill it with broth, get rid of the air pockets by poking around in there, and then um, we're gonna put a weight on it so nothing comes above the brine, put a lid on it, and then we're gonna put it in the cabin. Every couple days we're gonna burp it so it doesn't explode. Um, and then in two to three weeks, we will have fermented peppers and onions and garlic. And then we're just gonna blend it. Blend uh, it to a pulp. Um, I'll tell you what. And, and then Jay will have his new favorite hot sauce. hot sauce that he made himself. Yay. Did I, did I make it? I think we made it together. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. It's really, and when you think about it, it's very simple. You're, you're literally looking at a few different kinds of peppers, garlic, onions, uh, salt water brine. I have newt. All that stuff. And okay, move your hand out of the way. I don't want to burn. No. There we go. That's where it flew. That's yeah. awesome. Well, that should be the trick. Thank think. you, best friend. Yeah. And we probably want to get the wide mouth funnel. Absolutely. To pour this. I need to get a stainless steel one of those. Yes, we do. We need to get a stainless steel one of those. Yeah. These are priorities. Yeah. I'm gonna pick this up. All right. Uh, uh, oh yeah, it's all dissolved. Uh, uh, there's a tiny bit in the very center, but let's let's uh, we'll get there. We're almost there. We don't need to be salty about it. That's where your vortex is just sending. Was it? Yeah, yeah, because you were good. doing it in a circle. So look at that. All right. Guess we don't need that thing anymore. We do though. Well, we do, but not while we're pouring it. Keep going. All right. Uh, first, yep. Not first, no. No. First thing I'm gonna do is just try and get all the bubbles out. We're gonna just poke the. Well, you think about them. I was about to say that. Think about them like little canoes and just tip them over. Yeah, it's never mind. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, little like cups. It's an inside joke. Um, if you had little cups in there that you've got air pockets trapped, if you just flip them around, the air comes out. And it'll also make a little bit more room, uh, not for the peppers, but for the water. So you can see exactly where everything's sitting. Once you get the air pockets out, you can kind of push it all down. make a weight if you don't have a weight for you know this kind of stuff is a small jar filled with water in a plastic bag there you go. <laughs> always leave room in your jar for your weight yeah it's always it's sometimes it's hard to know how much is going to actually be displaced i actually think it's better just to do this like just jam that thing on there so right now i'm just trying to get everything under the brine and then um you probably want to use like an airlock lid, which has, which like, um, I'm going to do this just for now because I don't know where my airlock lids are. I have to do, do some digging. So it's sealed, nothing can get in. Um, if I was going to leave it like this, you know, I you not go and find a um, airlock lid. Um, you can, you just have to burp it every day, maybe a couple times a day, the kind of the deeper you get into the ferment. Um, this is very similar to like how sauerkraut works. Um, so I'm going to probably dig around and find a, a lid for this that will, um, release the gas so I don't have to, to remember to, um, but this totally works as well. So that, look at how pretty it is. It is pretty. It's important when you burp it to hold it next to your eye, especially no, with yes, hot peppers. Definitely you want to do that. You want to look that. into it. And so you can see how hot it is. I mean, Jay is going to definitely do that, but yeah, I wouldn't recommend inadvertently. It. Yeah, that's going to happen. So that's pretty much it. We'll um, keep an eye on it. If anything exciting happens, we'll film it. And then in two to three weeks, when it's done fermenting, we will uh, do some more recording of us uh, enjoying beating it to a bloody pulp and then uh, eating it, maybe in some salsa. I would like that very much. All right, good stuff. Yeah, there we go. Good stuff.